There it is. Hello, everybody. It's a part three of our Castle Defence Pack presentation for your perusal. Agents incoming cold calls via telephone line. SPLSPro.com frequently asked questions about agents cold calling, administrative account balances, collection, orders, debt collection agents after Mr. or Mrs. Trustee, trustees. <clears throat> well, this is a practically interesting area as one's landline and mobile telephone lines are not listed as public and commercial access points for trade, levy and commerce. If you so choose, you can permit these calls or one can remove the assumed and implied access to these private access points stroke phone lines. The reason agents usually try to make contact is nominally as there is a legal controversy in the name of one's legal person, all caps name that we manage. The legal personality and person. This controversy is, if ignored, will not, will not go away. It will not be forgotten about. And in addition, Agents' fines, fees, charges, and interest will be added on to the original charge debt. Charge stroke debt, I should say. Under the pre action protocols and the Crown of the City of Londinium, if you're not sure where that is, it's like London with extra letters. <laughs> collection and enforcement agents and agencies of said London City Crown State. So, <clears throat> We shall now run, sorry, let me start again. So we shall now run the all through the scenario whereby the landline or mobile will be called. Whereby upon answering the telephone to unknown and uninvited callers, talking of which. <laughs> really? Yeah, my home phone is somebody uninvited. Uh, as the telephone rings. <laughs> wow, synchronicity. <laughs> Syncretism. Yeah. There you um, go. It's probably the government telling me I've got to register. Anyway, um, <laughs> as the telephone rings, one answers and one says, hello only. No name or calling is given by one at this point. No other word, just hello. How may I direct your call is sufficient. Then wait for the uninvited caller to say hello and ask for the legal person they're looking to obtain via tacit acquiescence of a woe man. Your legal personality fiction person straw man. Previously, we used to answer as Mr. Mrs., but not these days. We are learned and not sinners and debtors. Flesh and blood natural man is in the grand tour Hello? Kev? Let's just pause that. Hi. Yep. Let's resume. We're resumed. All is good. Continue, my good man. Yeah. Sorry, people. That's whoever was trying to ring me at home is trying to ring me on the mobile. So it's definitely somebody I don't want to speak to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, right, where were we? We could have had a live, okay. um, uh, it wouldn't have been fair, but we could have I had could a have live. I could have had it live. <laughs> <laughs> it, was lucky. One. it is one as we live. <laughs> Come on. Uh, sorry, where were we? Okay, previously oh, we used to answer us. Yeah, right. So, grantor of dominion is where we were. God. Uh, set law. Woe man, be as kings and always in honour. They should then attempt to make contact and ask for a legal title, Mr, Mrs, Miss, Ms, and name and surname. For example, hello, can I speak to Mr John Smith? The receiver of the call, the woe man, will then ask, who is calling? And from what company and for what reasons? 
the cold caller agent is now required to introduce themselves prior to any further information and or data being granted or agreed to. <clears throat> Do you see how we politely and simply change the way we speak and just by holding back a few choice words and pieces of legal information, woe man will stop the Mr. Mrs. being joined to woe man via accepting the titles of said Mr. Mrs. of the legal personality under tacit acquiescence. If the agent is unwilling or unable to identify themselves and the company they are calling from, and for what reason, one may end the call. Simple as that. You can't give me what I've requested. We go no further. <clears throat> and so you may end that call after informing them to cease and desist harassment calls without prior consent and stroke or appointment. If you have a call recorder or are recording the call, you can point out that you have a copy of the call and will use it as evidences if further harassment and terror is conducted after is conducted after the requirements and wishes that you have expressed the agents have cold called you therefore in our opinion there is no legal requirement to inform them of said recording if one makes outgoing, outbound calls to others, then at the first point of contact, let the receiver know that the call and data is being collated for legal and lawful protections, as is Woman's right as the data controllers at law. In addition, it may not be conven a convenient time that they have called to trick us with their scripts and claims. Either way, look at the situation and take from this whatever you wish. Once the uninvited agent caller has identified themselves, the company they work for and the reason for the call today, and then the name of the legal person stroke personality they wish to speak to, then one can choose to accept the titles and agree to the full public liabilities and legal rules, policy and consent to the call and the issues surrounding the call and account. If you do not wish to accept the call, then one may say, in brackets, once all identities and caller information has been disclosed to you, my person, known as Mr. And Mrs. John Jane Smith, are not present and they are unable to take the call right now. I am the data controller for said name. How may I assist with your line of inquiry? Excellent, thank you, Kev. I shall continue. The agent now, um, officer, many different scenarios, but this one is as we've said, so please stick with the telephone, okay? But any agents, the agents in particular, in this scenario will not be able to continue the call as it's a telephone-based um, call and so they can't see you, they're not in the presence of, they only have the verbal exchange here, no physical um, encounter. So they can't uh, continue the call as the governance of the uh, AFOR Data Protection Act and uh, the general data, GDPR, general data protection rules. Is that right, Kev? Reg regulations. Regulations, there we go. That's why I wanted to confirm burning <laughs> the candle at both ends and it needs to be key point critical for each word to be Hang on, so that's a GDPR, and um, we do DSAR under the GDPR, a data subject access request, all right? They stipulate that only the account holder <clears throat> may speak to the agent, the account holder. I will point out that the account, in our opinion, is not our person's and it's not man's. It belongs to a corporate, a corporation, and a company, unless one claims it like they ask you to do. And that we see is volunteering information, okay? And equity does and will not aid a volunteer. The account is not well manned, neither is it the legal persons, as it is housed and located within the foreign international commercial corporations. Foreign, yes, they are foreign, and uh, <laughs> one really would require an international treaty 
in order to conduct um, any activities with such an entity. And no, this wouldn't be, in our opinion, UK contract law, even though it's classified as contracts and law under UK, this is not actually contract law, um, so to speak, um, down to your opinion, but from us in our opinion. All right, so do not claim the account or the legal personality or the name, the surname in particular, the date of birth, national insurance number and or account number. If you do, or if one does claim that, it is entirely at your peril beryl. The caller or the agent, the phishing one, yes, uh, collection, revenue, you know, account administration is going to ask who they're speaking to. And they'll probably say, you know, uh, we have this number and line listed as Mr. Mrs. John Jane Smith. Is this an incorrect number? One may consider, because you've got the data protection now, to answer that as, as you see fit, if that number is correct or incorrect, you know, uh, and this is why we're here. So you may reply with the following. You are speaking to I, Woman, David, John, Jane, <laughs> settlor and grantor of this non-commercial private estate and homestead. I am the data controller. Then the agent caller will usually try to obtain joinder again as per the script they have in the data fields on their computer systems. They will ask again. May I ask what is your date of birth? They don't know what they're doing. They're following the script on the screen, simple as. They're required to fulfill these fields. They will inquire and uh, you may reply, Woe man's date of birth is hearsay. I was born in 1980. That's all I can tell you. Where is Mr. And Mrs. John Jane Smith? The agent will ask. May I speak with them? At this point, you may try to explain your new position to the agent and attempt to verbally express the correct trust to them. And we have given you notice to agent, notice to principal, notice to principal, is notice to agent. That doesn't always work and doesn't always get carried, carried down and up the line. So bear that in mind. Person is beneficiary in this case, the Mr. Mrs. The agent of said company can now be the trustee and natural flesh and blood man is grantor, biblical sense, set law, lawful realm. They seldom follow the information they are given or even comprehend it and they're not legally trained, okay? We're lawfully um, aware trained by ourselves initiates of self so and um, they are not required to be you know uh, the fact one has expressed the correct trust titles you've got it recorded on your call recorder and you've expressed the new titles and positions on a recorded call and you may follow that up with paperwork that will be sufficient for now you may ask them if they're legally trained they will be call centers workers in a call center not they're not legally trained as they wouldn't be working in a call center, answering calls on a campaign, the telephone dial out stuff, you know, so they're not even aware of law. They may be aware of statutory law, such as consumer credit agreement, human rights, and other such instruments we have to assist Hugh Woman's with, Hugh Man, <laughs> all right, so it's a play there, Hugh Man, um, Hugh Woman's, Hugh Woman, Man, Man of the Womb with person, so just bear that in mind. Frequently asked questions about cold calling. We have what is cold calling? Cold calling, you know, uh, is the act of making uninvited visited, visits <clears throat> to private residents' homesteads to sell goods and services. And we get asked is cold calling illegal or is it in fact unlawful? Well, cold calling is not illegal. However, any trader that ignores a sticker or notice on a door on property stating that you do not wish to receive cold calls, peddlers, and traffic such as, they may be committing, ah, this is legal talk, remember, an offence, a criminal offence, so it would be an offence, not a criminal offence, but they list them as criminal offences. We, uh, we have separated that before and see other videos. Also, any trader that ignores any request by you to leave and not return is then committing a criminal act, okay, because it's trespass and trespass, um, forgive those who trespass and etc and um, it comes in many layers trespass and you can see where it started off um, its beginning of life <laughs> it wasn't legal 
was in the Lord's Prayer for, for one of the earliest, uh, not the first, but one of the <laughs> earliest representations of that. Anyone who does not cold, anyone who does cold call and offers to sell you goods or services that cost more than, and we need to check this, this is to be confirmed, around about 40 to 50 pounds are required then to provide you with a written notice giving you 14 days to cancel the agreement. We haven't validated or confirmed that. Um, we will do so. You are free to yes. search and do that now. Um, anyone who fails to give this notice um, will also be committing a criminal offence. Uh, uh, forgive me, this is just how we've written it for you to understand, but uh, <laughs> a, a crime against man. Um, legal would be, you know, complaint and uh, an offence. Lawful would be a crime. Depends how you go. So we've used both of the areas there. They are not to be used together. It is either criminal or it would be an offence. Criminal, private, public offence. Which trading standards are able to investigate? Should we buy from cold callers? See videos one and two for your answers on that. And uh, um, SPLs Pro believe that owners, residents have a right to choose whether or not they wish to deal with cold callers by displaying a notice, sticker or sign on your door. That was a basic aeroplane, I think, yeah. There's something going on here, yeah. Yeah, it's all right, it's good. Um, it's a problem. Um, by displaying a sticker or sign on your door, notice, etc., you should be able to expect, express your wishes to be, you should be able to expect your wishes to be respected. Okay, notices, doctoring of notices, that's why we say that. If they say I didn't see it, draw their attention to it, get yourselves off without opening the door. Um, SPL's Pro Safety Information for Man's Home Castle is never to deal with cold callers. Cold calling is a favorite method of rogue traders whose only aim is to get as much money as their victims as possible. And even if you avoid dealing with rogue traders, those who cold call will usually be persuasive and often catch you when you least expect it. And agents for debt collection, revenue, fines, fees, orders, they do cold call um, uh, and they will harass um, from, is it nine in the morning till nine at night? They will, yeah, it's supposedly, but it's, they have been known and are particularly good at turning up extra early. Uh, I'd just like to add just a quick one, not to hold yeah. this up too much. Yeah, there are pre-action protocols that these firms have to adhere to. So if they just turn up at your door and you've not had a letter giving you seven days notice, then they haven't completed pre-action protocols, which means they've just voided what, they've, what they're doing. That's a fact. So there are pre-action protocols. They can't just turn up. They do just turn up at your door, but the rules actually say they're not allowed to do that. They have to inform you first. Yes, That's we'll, we'll expand on that on the watch parties and yeah. comments and we'll get the, uh, with the actual uh, scripts from the areas of the pol See, These are rules, policies, mm -hmm. pre-action protocol, um, public areas of law there, which we can uh, we can get to you. Um, we have links in the document, many and various. Bear with us. We've we've put this together in rather a short time against all odds on a wing and a prayer, <laughs> and it's easy to for me and Kev to say what we're going to do and what we want to do, but getting it down, the choice of words, the scenario as we found is a little bit more technical. So we're going to close down from me and hand over to Kev. Um, he's going to explain how we can prevent cold calling traders. Um, from calling at homes and uh, um, furthermore give you, you know, uh, expansion on that. So uh, when we say cold callers, we're on a video now with agents of collection and levy and fines and fees, but they all classified as one. But remember what the topic is here and uh, thank you. No problem. So trading standards is always a good uh, port of call. Uh, they're very helpful in my experience. I've had nothing but positive stuff when I've uh, reported or had some interaction with trading standards. My personal experience has always been very good. Um, uh, so we're just coming up to some issues here. So trading standards have their own stickers, which you, I do believe they'll supply you with for free if you contact them. Uh, these stickers are designed to make it clear to any would-be cold callers that they are not welcome. And we hope that most traders will respect 
your wishes and the sticker. However, we do not guarantee that by displaying a sticker, you will not receive visits from any cold calling traders. They are persistent little buggers. <laughs> if traders do ignore your sticker, please do let us know and use the template letter at the end of this publication to send to, well, that will be up on the, obviously we'll, we'll place that up for you to see, uh, to send to the trader. If you have an address for them, to ask them not to call at your home again. We will use the information from you to build up intelligence and identify the worst offenders who we may be able to take action against. We cannot reply to every request, but in the case of an emergency, particularly where a trader is on the scene or a suspected rogue trader is expected to return at a particular time, we will try to get officers out to you. This is trading standards, by the way. Can I just clarify this? It's not, it's not, Dave, <laughs> yeah. and I. It's not Dave and I coming out in our uniforms. I'd like to. I'd like to do that oh, yeah. one day, but for now we can't. No, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well said. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> Future. <laughs> if, you're, if you're vulnerable, elderly, um, less abled, and you're on your own, you're isolated, we will take on, you will give us authority, I will, eventually, down the line, emergencies, emails, and et cetera. We will then pick it up at the earliest opportunity and then we would look at assisting in the best way we can um, with that when we say yes so that's just a generalization in it <laughs> yes very good so that you know vulnerable but you know as Dave was saying elderly people on their own people are ill if it comes under vulnerable and get you get the property marked down as a vulnerable person who's living there it's very important we can, we can utilize this from the interaction on Facebook instead of sharing what might be going on, what we think is going on and getting into the hype and waiting for Q, we can actually utilize the man's time in the splspro.com Facebook family. And we added a 60 year old uh, supporter in there the other week and she's been overwhelmed with the love and support information. And so that's how we roll. It's that we can do it and we operate with the systems that we have, the ones that we are not using to full effect and to full benefits and that's how if you're wondering well how would we do that you go onto a free public access domain which is called yeah facebook and that allows us mm -hmm. to then manage 24 7 with the daytime the nighttime hours that are there because i've chatted to them at three four in the morning um, when <laughs> i'm doing my work so it does work and then we have the private domain for the more um hardcore um supporters and uh, development education so that's where we'd look at it and for the time being, all right. And we have emails as well, but that site um, on Facebook is manned um, somebody there more or less every hour of the day, um, and, and, and it works well. So we've utilized it before, and um, we are able to do it again, aren't we? So, all right, indeed. Okay. So, can I refuse someone entry to my home? Yes, absolutely. You do not have to allow anyone to enter your home and can refuse. You should never, I repeat, never allow anyone into your home unless you are able to make sure they are who they say they are and that they have a reason to be there. Honest callers will not mind being challenged. Absolutely they won't. How can I check whether a caller is genuine and has a legitimate reason for calling at my home? you may ask yes please <laughs> very few people will actually have a reason for turning up at your home unannounced and without an appointment however on rare occasions some honest callers may make unannounced home visits the most likely people to visit your home unannounced are utility companies attending to read a meter most of these companies operate a password scheme allowing you to register a password once you have registered your password any caller from the company should be asked to provide the password before being allowed in you should be able to find the details for registering a password on your utility bills or by calling your utility customer services department or service teams do you need a license to cold call? You do not need a license to cold call. However, if you are selling goods door to door, you will require a peddler's license. Peddler's licenses have to be given out by the police. Not 
police on bicycles that are pedaling. Let's just make that clear. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> are you a peddler? <laughs> Each individual caller must have a peddler's license and not just the employer. So if they're working for a firm, they still have to have an individual license. The firm's license does not cover them, is how I take that. Over to you, Mr. Jeremita. Mr. Is that a trick? Brother, David. Oh, oh what's sorry. That? He's tricking me, everyone. So, oh, I'm tricking him. I'm tricksy. What we got here? So we also have on the other videos, Ah, the microphone. So, uh, yes, uh, I appreciate that's laminated. We're giving these PDFs away. Um, you can get these from the Facebook domain now, and you can get them from the .com domain. That's your private property removal of implied rights of access. And you will see that as an N um, O uh, n notice of removal. N O R O I A. In, yeah, <laughs> notice of removal of implied rights of access. So when we abbreviate it, uh, no re error. It looks weird, but that's what that would uh, correlate to. And that's uh, formatted just for you to change the email address somewhere. Oh, no, it's on this one. This is the borderline rule, rule um, ruling that we found that I couldn't find and citate actually anywhere. But it appears the police do use this. And it's got the rest of the criminal, um, where are we? Section 68, Criminal and Justice Public Order Act 1984 for you to look at. Um, and it's also got um, notice, admittance, private property, trespass, seen strictly by appointment only. And then you'd email or contact. Um, I put contact to SPLS Pro there. You would put your email there. I don't want emails from um, the private uh, domain and emailing contact. You put your email in that bit. All right. So we'll get them to you. Old fire. And we have got them to you already a long time ago. Um, anyone who cold calls offering services like home maintenance work does not need a peddler's license. A peddler's license is not a guarantee that they will act lawfully. Um, and it does not allow them to call at your home against your wishes. Okay. Can politicians, market researchers, religious groups call and knock and, you know, try the same? Our notices are not designed to provoke prevent politicians from canvassing that's another word as well as peddling for elections religious groups or market researchers however residents do not have to speak to anybody at any time at the door that you're not expecting okay now if somebody knocks from an emergency services it's a different kettle of fish somebody knocks you know in a uniform you do need to acknowledge them in some way and ask what and where and why if there's a building emergency fire um, risk gas leak things like that so when we say this it's not saying you don't ever need to answer your door. It's you have to make the judgment call there. And there are times where they will break down the door to get access if it is a HSE yes. emergency. Those people that can do that, emergency access rights would be the services as we've found. Okay, so can charity collectors call at your door? The notices and stickers from the trade in standards are not aimed at stopping genuine charity collections. Okay, we're not here for that. However, we would expect charity collectors to be able to show identification conform with the security home castle defense we're giving you here. Some charities ask for donations to be left for collection using a bag or leaflet. If you get requests like this, you should always read the details provided as not all collectors that act in this way are acting for charitable purposes, okay? Often you will find that the collector is a business collecting items, sell for profit, and they will include a company registration number on their paperwork as opposed to a charity registered number. Um, all charities must be registered with the Charity Commission, all legal charities and must be registered with the Charity Commission there. To check whether an organisation is a registered charity, you should contact the Charity Commission. And we have a, a little link there, I believe, .gov.uk, Government Organisations, Charity hyphen, hyphen Commissioner. Furthermore, any charity, wait, no, I've just skipped too many pages there, Kev. Uh, just bear with no, you me. haven't. You're right. You were no, no, exactly the right place. Furthermore's gone. I've just lost the word furthermore. Oh, so. Any charity carrying yeah. out collections. I'm just going back up the page. It just skipped and jumped. So can I refuse somebody into my home? Is there? Do you want me to crack on? Yeah, yeah, carry on, please. I've got lost. All right. So any charity carrying out collections for money 
has to get a permit giving permission for this. If you want to confirm that the charity collection is authorised, you can contact the licensing team, which will probably be your local authority council. Uh, that's where I would start because it would be the area they're working in. They would be responsible for licensing those entities, individuals, scumbags, whichever fits. <clears throat> what should I do if I receive a cold call? Trading standards recommend residents always say no to cold callers. We are always keen to be contacted by anyone who receives a cold call. Officers may be able to respond to incidents of cold calling by rogue traders to help the victim and disrupt and take action against the cold caller. Even if the cold caller has gone away, get in touch. We are always keen to have information about what happened. There you go, people. Yes, yeah, so they would get in touch with trading standards primarily and anybody you need to report that to that you decide that you think you need to report that to and make um, inroads to and afterwards via the Facebook or the um, private uh, domain or the YouTube videos or these watch parties, you would then give us the information on the live feeds in the forums, dedicated private ones and public ones on the Facebook and the Facebook trust there and we would collate that. So there's two areas that we encapsulates the royal we of um you know uh, <laughs> that area so you you may not go to the public and you may just come to us and then we will send you to the public places and we will collate your data area company debt collector um uh, all of the things we couldn't we've done that already so and that's the end of part three video three on the uh, the castle defense uh, there so thank you kev that went rather well i'm happy with that and we're coming up with video four now um, this will be answering the door to agents for collection, fines, fees, and levies. <gasps> oh, I, it's getting exciting. It's our favourite part here. And uh, <laughs> anything you'd like to say before we go, my brother? No, it's all good. I'm, I'm surprised at how well it's gone so far. I'm perturbed. <laughs> Stop you, why did you, we've got one more video left. Let's see if we get back <laughs> you all right. Know. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you, Scribe. Thank you, everybody. Uh, yeah, we love you. See you soon. Cheers. Let's get this one done.